Now let's consider small group instruction. As I go through these, understand that these models, these visual models that we built here, this is definitely not the only way to do it. This is an example to help you think through some different ways that you can set things up for small group. Really the question is how can you implement small groups in the hybrid model? So number one, plan online asynchronous activities for collaborative groups and or for independent work while you run small group sessions. And so I'm gonna start from this basic idea that you are the only teacher in this classroom. I know that some of you will have co-teachers, but just starting from you're the one teacher in the room and you need to run a small group. Let's say you have four students, you wanna do a four student small group and you have eight other students, whether they're in the classroom or at home and, you, and that's how you wanna do it. And maybe you wanna do three rotations. So you wanna plan stuff for the other kids to do. It's not that much different than what you would do if you were in a classroom traditionally. I want to work with these four students. I'm going to have these four students working in this on this project together. And I'm going to have these four students uh, maybe using an online platform or an assignment that was delivered in Google Classroom on laptops. So you would do that possibly in an actual classroom. So you can still do that. So it's just, now you have to throw in the Zoom aspect and some of the virtual stuff with it. So, okay, so you got to plan those activities and then consider how you can, uh, utilize additional adults as well. So maybe you do have a co-teacher or a paraeducator, or there's a one-on-one -on -one that gives you even more flexibility. So let's look at these, this model down here. So you might have like group one, might be the teacher working with a small group. And let's say first they're working with just virtual students because they decide, ah, it just so happens I have four students at home and eight kids in the classroom. So I'm gonna do a virtual group and then I'm gonna have them go and work on something else after that. I'm gonna rotate over to this group face-to-face and again, these students are over here working on something online. Uh, while that's happening, by the way, for during group one, group two might have been working on something collaborative and they're in the room together so they can talk even though they're six feet apart. Or maybe you have them communicate online, even if they're in the same room. And then maybe you have uh, some students working independently on some work. When you think about it like this and you think about it like you would in a normal classroom, it's really just blended learning, but some students are not in the classroom. Keep in mind, you can group by their physical location. Or are you going to group by differentiated instruction based on levels? Well, in that case, you're probably going to make each group a hybrid group between virtual and face-to-face. -face. You just figure out how you want to do that for each group, and then you communicate it to them and you rotate. I'm going to exit from this presentation for a moment and show you that we have in the speaker notes at the bottom, different variations on this model and different things for you to consider as you're creating these groups. Some of them discuss like how you can set up your Zoom sessions. So for example, uh, one recently that we've heard teachers using that's really interesting is you're going to run small group and you're going to have everybody working on something asynchronously. You can push everybody into the waiting room because they can't communicate and you don't have to worry about the settings or managing anything. Um, you can send the messages in the waiting room as a group um, and then you just pull students in to work with them in small group. Or you can do something similar to that where you do uh, breakout rooms and maybe you keep everybody in the main room and then you go in to a breakout group with a small group. You, you set your uh, chat and your microphone settings however you feel comfortable with for the students in the main room. And you even tell them you're recording the main room. They're in there working, they're collaborating online, possibly they're working independently, but then you can have just pull students over into a breakout group. So those are just kind of some examples of how you could run this technically and manage the students at the same time. And those could be students again, face-to-face -face in your classroom, or they can be students online or a combination. So here's a really simple version of that. Here you are, you're working with these six students right now, and you have all these students working on something independently, and then you can do rotation. 